hi oh uh, it's it's me again um kind of wanted to record a video about like my first love i've mentioned it or in i've mentioned her in earlier videos but someone asked me if i could talk about the concept of agape of godly selfless love um more outside of a religious context because i did do that also that was one of my uh, first real videos on this channel and uh so so yeah i'm gonna basically go through the story of the concept of agape of godly selfless love um more outside of a religious context because i did do that also that was one of my uh first real videos on this channel and uh so so yeah i'm gonna basically go through the story of how i met her how i fell in love with her um and what she taught me about agape um so yeah here it goes um basically um we met when i was in sixth grade she was two years older what what happened was that obviously i'm disabled i wouldn't need and this was like 12 13 years ago technology isn't as or wasn't as advanced back then i mean obviously we still had computers and stuff like that but like things just weren't at the level they are at now um anyway so i was gonna need like note takers and stuff to help me um in my classes and stuff right in middle school especially since you know in the transition we're not in one room anymore we would be moving to different classrooms for each period so i would need one essentially for every period and um at my school which this is a good idea i don't really know why more schools don't do this because it's a good um way to guarantee that disabled people are not um isolated from their peers in school which happens if they have an adult helping you that can be sort of alienating to others around the student well in in this school they had um upper class people so eighth graders uh be the the ones that were helpers and they would get volunteering credit for doing it and stuff like service hours which i'm not sure if they still require that but at least where i lived at the time they they did require that for um like middle schoolers and stuff and high schoolers so um yeah with all that preamble out of the way she signed up to be one of my helpers and i think we were taking an ancient world history class or something and that was the the class that she helped me in and I mentioned it here before all of my helpers were girls mainly there were one or two guys and I really appreciated their company as well um I definitely have fond memories of them but um yeah no this this girl I honestly love right you can't really explain it but I I just started falling for her and this was around the time I was like 12 or 13 right that's the time you really start to notice girls right and like it 
yeah man it was still just so heartbreaking for me though because you know what even at that age i knew we were never gonna be a thing but anyway i i fell in love with her and i i to this day i can't really explain it i can't really explain why it was that i did fall for her like I don't know, it, I guess it may have been just, just been repeated exposure, but at the same time, I don't know why that didn't happen then with my other helpers, um, yeah, who knows, but, um, yeah, I fell for her hard, I would go home and I would cry, I would literally cry, because like I said, I knew, oh, she was older, and I'm disabled, I already knew, bro, it was, it's over, it's over, for, like, especially back then, I mean, now that I'm, like, I'm a college graduate, um, you know, first person I was ever with was like 37 or something right it's not that big of a deal but at that time that's such a wide gap right especially to a 12 or 13 year old when you're talking about a 14 like 13 14 year old that's that's wild and so yeah, I turned into a sad boy, basically, and, um, even after the year was over, I, I was still in, in love with her, and, you know, we just continued, I just continued on that way, and, like, the next year, her younger sister is in one of my classes and I still remember she asked me like do you remember her and and I got so nervous my voice got hoarse that happens when when I'm when I'm nervous and so yeah it, um her younger sister was in one of my uh classes and that that was really something let me tell you that was really really something and then the year after that or no it might have been the same year I found her on Facebook and we started chatting and like all in all we probably sent each other like over 3,000 messages and then the year after that one of her personal best friends who was in this the same year as I was at this point, became my helper as well, in fact, she told him to go apply, so that he could help me do it, and, um, and, obviously, because I was poor, and gas was and is expensive, right, I couldn't just go, because the thing is, like, I lived in, in the poor, like, like, I don't want to call it red line, but you know what I mean, the, 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 the place where they put all of the, of the people that aren't white, <laughs> like, in, in areas, right, I had to be bused to the school that I was going to, um, in a white area, because, um, the school that I had been, like, zoned to go to literally couldn't afford to have me, and couldn't afford to, to have all the different aids to help me use the restroom, and these sort of helper programs, so yeah, I had to be bused to a, a wealthier whiter area, um, the, because of that, and so, but, like, I couldn't ask my dad to drive me however much to go see her and stuff like that, so, 
this friend of mine became like a our courier aside from the messages on Facebook but like for example I I got her this is so cringe but I I I got her chocolates the valentines after she rejected me and like I mean I don't really know what I was thinking man I was 14 I I I don't know I I really I really don't know about myself for that one but um but yeah um anyway she eventually like I got the courage to tell her that I loved her like that I was in love with her and um she she said she wasn't in love with me although interestingly I had our mutual friend the 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 courier say to her or I think she asked him or she got some idea that I was in love with her and like it made her giggle and like that that gave me false hope but um no no she said she um she she said she didn't feel the same way but that she was flattered and uh so yeah she that was my not my first ever rejection, but the first ever big one that I was like, wow. Um, and honestly, that was big for me because that basically defined the paths that I would go down in terms of, like, how I would develop um, mentally and intellectually for the next five years, five years or so, um, and, and, the, I've mentioned this before, but, yeah, I, I had bitterness that I didn't even know about, and it was actually eating away at me, although I pretended not to notice, and I started, like, trying to chase other girls at my middle school and then when I moved eventually my husband like it just it just wasn't it it, re it really wasn't worth it looking back on it but but around three years later and I don't know why but I I was just laying in bed really thinking about her for some reason. I think it was because either she or I um like either one of us messaged each other. I can't remember. It was probably me, right? Because I was the one that was still head over heels. Um and I don't know, I was just sitting in bed thinking about her, thinking you know, how can I get over this, because I, I felt like I needed to, like, it was holding me back, and I don't know why, but it, it just came to me that I needed to really let go, and to just have her happiness, excuse me, be my happiness, and that's literally what agape is, just being selfless and, you know, not thinking about yourself, but thinking about the object of your love. And that's, that's how I learned about and came to know about Christian love and understand it, really understand it and put it into practice um, without the Bible. Alright, I hope you enjoyed that. Bye.